Hi there, and welcome to this short video guide provided by the Academic Skills team here at the University of West of Scotland. My name is Ben Farrar. I'm one of the Academic Skills Advisors here at the University, and today we're going to take a brief look at the subject of critical reading, looking at what it is, how to do it, and providing some additional resources at the end if you still need them. Just before we get started, all the topics that we're going to cover today are going to be listed on the left-hand side of the video, so you're welcome to skip to whichever bit you need, or simply go through the whole thing from start to finish. So let's start with an overview. What is critical reading and how does it differ from other kinds of reading? Well, critical reading is a kind of active reading and it involves constantly questioning what you're reading in terms of its reliability, its validity, and its relevance to what you're writing. You're going to be reading for some kind of purpose, be it for a presentation or an assignment. So you want to be thinking about what, how you're reading and how it links back to what it is that you're eventually going to be writing. So rather than passively taking information in, critical reading asks the reader to constantly question both themselves and the things they read in terms of what's being said and how it all links together. It's a crucial part of writing a good critical assignment and it's worthwhile to spend some time doing it in a dedicated time focused on critical reading rather than trying to do it alongside the writing process. Uh, so what does it involve? Well, focus for a start. You really need to focus down on a specific topic. You want to be constantly paying attention to what you're reading. Um, this can be quite an intense process, so it's worth keeping track of it as you go along. This can involve a note-taking process, quite often be it jotting things down in the margins or keeping track of things in other ways. Some people like to write things down on a separate uh, piece of paper. Some people like to make mind maps and that kind of thing. There are tables and that sort of stuff that you can use to keep track of what papers are saying. Whichever way you want to go about it, but make sure that you are keeping a record of what you're actually thinking as you go along, because it'll help you to build that connected knowledge. And it is very intensive, so it is worth remembering that it will take quite a bit of time. Uh, if you think about the amount of time that you usually spend working on your assignments, the reading process often takes longer than the writing process. And it's worth spacing out because it is very intense. You need to be able to take breaks. You can't do it all in one big rush. Um, the aim of it is to try and avoid a situation where you're reading something and then you're moving on to the next thing that you're reading and then you're moving on to the next thing that you're reading, but you're not necessarily seeing the links between those things. You want to avoid thinking of reading as a linear process where you simply read from one thing to the next to the next and think of it as a process of building a web of information, seeing how the information all connects together and then being able to write intelligently on those connections rather than just seeing it as a step-by-step -step process going all in one direction. So how do we approach this? Well, the first thing that we want to do is start reading, but how do we choose what to read? You will always run into the issue that there's simply too much to read. We have libraries full of books. How do we narrow it down? Well, a good way to narrow it down is to think about what we're reading and how reliable what we're reading is. So if we think of it in terms of a traffic light system of the kinds of sources that we're gonna be using, our best sources are gonna come from journals and academic books. These are peer reviewed, they're checked by experts, and it means that the information in them is very, very reliable. Uh, Non-academic books and newspapers and magazines can sometimes provide interesting information, but they often simplify things. They're aimed at a readership, and they're also aimed at a commercial market. They're trying to sell something. So oftentimes you'll end up with simplified versions that don't provide all the information that you need. They can be quite difficult to use in academic papers. Websites are quite complex. Some are good, some are bad. In general, when we're talking about websites, if we're looking at official bodies, like for, for instance, the government or the NHS or census data and that kind of thing, this is gonna provide us with reliable information, often statistical information and that kind of thing. However, sources like Wikipedia or blogs where anybody can edit them, these sources of information haven't got any kind of quality control really beyond internal. So there's a limit to how much we can trust them. Also watch out for websites that have ulterior motives like trying to sell you things and that kind of stuff. So websites can go either way, but generally it's still gonna be the best idea to try and get as much information as possible from journals and academic books. Once you have your reading, you can start questioning it. Now, there are lots of questions that you can ask while you're reading, and many of them will be subject specific. We're not gonna look at subject specific ones today. We're just gonna look at some general questions. So asking the following questions will help you focus your reading and streamline your work. So asking things like, why am I reading this? What do you actually want to get out of it? What's the function of, of reading this particular paper? Is it the most important paper? Is it the most relevant paper? Or are there other things that you could be reading first? What do you want to get out of it? So as we said, you're going to be reading for a specific purpose, be it a presentation, an essay, a report. You're going to want to get some specific piece of information out of it. So think about what you're looking for and target that information throughout. Keep an eye on it. 
What do you already know? We've talked about trying to build a web of information. So you want to think about what you're reading now fits into that web, how it all connects together. And have I read enough? This is one of those how long is a piece of string questions, but generally it's a good idea to keep the word count in mind. Remember, you need to leave room for things like introductions, conclusions, and of course your own analysis in your essay. So you can't just constantly be cramming in references every single sentence. You need room for the writing to breathe. So think about how many words you have to work with. Think about how many words you're going to use for each section, and then think about how much you want to read based on that. Once you've got your paper, you're gonna to wanna to start extracting information. Now, again, this can be subject specific, but there are certain key things that most academic papers, particularly research papers will have that you can pull out and use. The first one is the main argument. Now, this is often found very early on in the paper, and it's sometimes also found in an expanded version in the conclusion. It's not always the most obvious thing, so don't worry if it takes a little bit of finding, but make sure you try and identify the key argument first. Second of all, we want to find the evidence. Now, this might be new data that they've collected, or it might be literature and references, or it could be a combination of both. It's going to be peppered in throughout, so think about the kind of evidence that they're using, how they're using it, and how it all links together. The third thing we're going to want to keep out for is the methodology and the approach. So the kind of data that they're using, if they engaged in original research, and what they did to get that information. Now, this can be quite complex, so don't panic too much, particularly if you're in the early years. But it is worth thinking about what kind of information they're using, even if it's something like a literature review, how have they approached that literature review. This often has its own section within the paper, so you'll often find a title that says methods or something like that. The fourth thing that we want to keep an eye out for is the conclusions that were drawn. What did the authors end up concluding based on the evidence that they presented? Uh, this will obviously come towards the end of the paper, and it can sometimes span several paragraphs. Sometimes conclusions can be quite complex because there can be competing explanations for things. But do try and keep an eye out for what the conclusions of the paper actually are. And then finally, we want to be looking for limitations. Now, the limitations could be issues with the research, things they could have done differently, any problems they had, small sample sizes, for, for instance. Maybe if it's a literature review, things are out of date now. Whatever it is, you want to be looking for these. Now, sometimes the authors of the papers will actually acknowledge these themselves, often at the end. Sometimes they won't, and you'll have to do a bit of digging. This is where your web of information comes in useful, because the more you understand about the existing research and the things that we know, the more you can find the limitations and things that perhaps papers haven't discussed that they could have discussed. All research everywhere has some kind of limitation. It doesn't inherently make the research bad. It's simply worth acknowledging that there are other things that might be going on here. So once you've extracted those things, you can start playing detective and interrogating the actual information that you've now extracted. So when you're critically reading, you can think of yourself as a kind of detective and you're looking for facts and evidence. You're trying to take an objective stance and see if the conclusion matches the evidence. And most importantly, you wanna draw your own conclusions at the end. So do you agree with the conclusions that the papers are drawing or do you think that there's something else going on? It's always worth trying to insert your own critical thinking into this process while while you're reading because you'll often find that things don't quite add up and actually you can put that together through looking at how the information all links together. When you're reading, do keep track of your notes, as we said earlier, and try and continually think about how what you're reading fits into your web of knowledge. So at the beginning, you might not know an enormous amount about the topic, but fairly quickly, you're going to gain an understanding of how all of this links together. So as you start to read things, actually, these papers slot in to that web of knowledge that we were talking about earlier. They all connect together, and it means that you get a really good overview of what the topic looks like and how everything fits together. Finally, we're going to want to start evaluating all of the things that we've read. Now, this again can result from a series of questions such as, does the following the evidence lead to the conclusion? Um, is the final argument convincing? So as we've mentioned, once you've found that final argument, look at the evidence and see if it does add up. And what's the relevance of this new knowledge that you've just acquired to your work? How are you going to link it into your assignment? This is a really vital part of the process because ideally, every single thing in your assignment is going to help answer the question or meet the assignment brief. So make sure you're constantly thinking about how it all connects together. So in summary then, and to provide a few extra resources, uh, critical reading in general is about engaging deeply with the reading available to you as a trainee academic.
Um, it requires you to identify key arguments, evaluate evidence, combine information into your own unique web of knowledge, and then draw your own conclusions based upon that. Now, this is a difficult and intense process, so remember to leave yourself plenty of time, uh, space out your work, and do reach out for additional help if you think it would benefit you. So here at the Academic Skills Team, we're very happy to help you with this kind of stuff. Um, so in terms of resources, you can access the Careers and Skills page through your My Day to access additional resources on critical reading, among all other academic skills related topics. You can also book one to one or group appointments with us through the page or attend one of our monthly webinars. We quite frequently run webinars on critical thinking skills and that kind of thing. And uh, we also have a podcast called A Wee Blather About uh, with regular episodes on all topics relating to your studies. We do have multiple episodes in the pipeline at the moment on critical thinking. So something nice and casual just to see how we approach it and various tips that we recommend in a slightly longer format than this video. If you are running into any issues, you can always reach out. We're always here. You can simply contact us at skills at uws.ac.uk with any additional questions you may have about the service. Or as mentioned before, you can access the service directly, book one-to-one -one appointments with us and see the kind of resources that we have. I hope this has been useful and we might see you soon in an appointment. Bye-bye.